I've searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise And treasures it fade Are never enough And you came along You put me back together and now every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing better 
What's up, everybody? Hey, welcome back to Life on Mission, where we're talking about how to live out this ministry of reconciliation that God gave us. Paul writes his letter to the church in Corinth, and he says, look, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, but he gave me and he gave you this ministry of reconciliation. So we've been talking uh, to some people and interviewing them and figuring out how to do this in the real world, because the reality is, you're likely not gonna be a preacher on a stage with a microphone and fancy cameras and lights. But we're gonna be living in the world around us, having friends and neighbors and families. And so if we can figure out how to live life on mission, man, we can make a big difference. So today, we're having a really awesome conversation with my friend Tim. And today we're talking about the topic of humility. Now, the funny thing about humility is some of the most humble people you know have no idea that they're humble. So you can't really just ask them about humility, you have to hear their story. And everybody that I know that knows Tim and is friends with Tim, man, they just have this raving review that he just lives out his life of humility in such a way that shows the ministry of reconciliation. And so you guys come, let's go get a cup of coffee and hang out with my friend Tim and talk about life on mission. Tim. What's up, man? How are you, man? Good, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for hanging out today. Thank you. How's your coffee? It's great. It's great. Usually I like, like sweet drinks, and <laughs> this is pretty sweet, so I'm vibing with it. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so uh, most people that are gonna be watching this don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us for a second, who is Tim Hack? Where are you from? Uh, what do you do? And how did you come to know Jesus? Yeah. Um, so I am from Northern Virginia, like DC area, born and raised, okay. um, and moved here to South Carolina in 2015. Okay. And so uh, moved here for New Spring College, uh, graduated from that, and I currently work for Christy Ministries, um, which is like a traveling evangelistic ministry. My boss, Chris, travels the country, tells a story, um, and yeah, uh, do that. And then actually about to start hanging out with discipleship a little bit. Cool. Um, Central Discipleship. So those are my two kind of jobs right now. And I'm Sweet. 25 years old. Yeah. What do you do for fun? Um, so I live with five guys. Um, and so, I mean, when we hang out, Solid. it could look like anything. We did, uh, we went go-karting a couple weeks ago at Frankie's. Like literally like 15 of us just went and just ran the course <laughs> like three times. That's but awesome. yeah. And then you asked how I met Jesus. Yeah. Um, met Jesus back when I was four years old. Um, and said yes to him when I was four, and um, didn't like really know what that meant. And I was like, yeah, I hear he's great, and I'm trying to follow him. And then over the years, just learn what it meant to follow him. That's awesome. Yeah. So in this Life on Mission uh, series, we're kind of talking through how Jesus was very clear about what he came to do, right? He came to glorify God. He came to redeem mankind, to take the penalty for sin, but he also came to build a family of people all across the world, from different cultures, uh, different languages, different backgrounds, all who would follow him, sell out, and be all about him and his mission. And then he, he dies on the cross, he comes back from the dead, yeah. and then he ascends to heaven, and he basically says like, all right, Christians, like, here you go. Here's, here's, here's your ministry, your message, your, your job now is to um, do what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, which is this, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Yep. And then he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And so what we're talking about is like most people who have to figure out how to follow Jesus, they're never gonna be a preacher on a stage, right? Like, you're not a preacher, are you? No, no. no, no. In fact, like it is like kind of makes you nervous thinking about like getting on a stage. Yes. Preacher, right, okay. <laughs> so, so most people are gonna fall in that category. Like you've gotta figure out how to be a genuine, true, sold out disciple, follower of Jesus, even though you're not gonna get on a stage and be able to tell people. So you've got to figure out how to show people how to follow Jesus, and you can't do it with your words, you gotta yeah. do it with your life. Yep. And so we've talked about how some of, there's, there's some distinctives that set us apart in this ministry of reconciliation. One of these is that, that we live for the glory of God, right? Like we talked about this with Drew, like there's a purpose to your life, and it's not so that Tim Hack can be as rich and as famous as possible, it's that no, I'm actually living my life 
on purpose every day for the glory of God, yeah. right? We talked about uh, last week with, with Billy, we talked about how it's, it's life lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. That you don't just have to muster all this strength to make your life great and about yourself. That, like We can actually rely on and trust in the helper of the Holy Spirit to do that. So today, what I wanna get to a combo with you about is you, you kind of have a reputation. I don't know if you know this or not, but some people, uh, when I was trying to figure out like, who do we want to talk to about humility? Uh, multiple people were like, dude, go hang out with Tim. Like Tim is, he's so humble and he's just, he's such an awesome guy. And I thought of this, this quote, there's a, um, a book by C.S. Lewis called Mere Christianity. And it's, he basically unpacks like, it's his like argument for Christianity basically. And here's this quote. So I want to read this yeah. because today we're talking about how being humble is actually a way to accomplish the mission that Jesus yeah. died to give us, right? Okay, so here's what he says. So listen to some of this. He says, do not imagine that if you meet a really humble man, that he will be what most people call humble nowadays. He will not be a sort of greasy, smarmy person who's always telling you that, of course, he's nobody. Probably all you will think about is that he seemed cheerful, intelligent, and a chap who took a real interest in what you said to him. If you do dislike him, it will be because you feel a little envious of anyone who seems to enjoy life so easily. He will not be thinking about humility. He will not be thinking about himself at all. Mm -hmm. And I just, I find that to kind of fly in the face of what we consider humility to be, right? Like you, like you think about humility as somebody who like, you know them because they're known for being humble, but that's kind of the opposite, mm -hmm. right? So I just want you to talk to us for a second about what humility means to you. Yeah. Like as you've, you've followed Jesus for a long time, since you're four years old, how has, how has committing to the way of following Jesus shaped you into such a humble guy that, you know, you just easily are just this intelligent guy who loves God and just makes the world around you better. So where, where does it come from in the Bible? Where have you found that in the Word? And you know, how, how has that become part of your life? Yeah, man, um, so I, Think like humility. When I think, or when I think of humility, I think of like Philippians two. Um, Philippians two talks about just Christ being humble and His humility. Yeah. Um, and specifically, uh, chapter two, verse three and four. So it says, "Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others." And so um, I read that and I think like, how can I do that in my daily walk? So like, I remember um, you were talking about, it was really funny, you mentioned a lot of people think like, man, I just wanna make money. I just wanna go out there and just make it big. Right. I remember having that mindset. Exiting college, I was just like, you know what? Or exiting high school, I have the mindset of, I'm just trying to make money. Right. I'm just trying to make it big and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And I remember uh, just having a, a specific moment where I was like, I feel like I'm called into ministry, and that's like really humbling, and I'm not trying to do that, but we'll see what the Lord has for me. And then he just made it clear as to what I was supposed to do. And in that time, uh, he pruned my heart in terms, and he still does, because there's times where I'm just like, I just wanna make money, and just wanna be you know, sure. the guy or whatnot. And um, I think he just pruned it, and he's continuing to prune it. Yeah. And I remember, um, moving down to South Carolina, and I was just like, you know, I just want to make the next big thing and, and do it for Jesus. Yeah. And like mask it with just, I just want to do the, make the next big, um, or help create the next big hill song and do it for Jesus, or the next big elevation, or even New Spring, just do it for Jesus. Yeah. And um, I think now, man, or the, the area that I feel like I'm getting to is, I just want to love God and love people. And like, I think humility, like in terms of loving, like, in terms of loving people, it takes humility. Yeah. And this is like something that I'm learning every day. Um, I mean, I live with Caleb, he's one of the filmmakers here. Like, he could tell you, he's seen multiple times where I have not exemplified humility. Yeah. Um, but I think it's something that I'm learning every day. Like, if you look through the Bible, you read um, through the New Testament, you, I mean, look at m pretty much every character that the Lord used yeah. had humility. Yeah. And I think there's multiple people countless people that have walked the face of the earth that we will never hear about that were humble and that loved people in the way that Paul and that Peter and John and all these massive like heroes of the Bible did and we'll never hear about them yeah. ever. So I'm gonna wrap with one quick story and then I want you to be thinking about 
given some practical advice. Okay, so Jesus has his disciples and it's one of the, the stories that I just, I can't get away from in the Gospels. You know, he has his disciples and he washes their feet. Okay, which one, Jesus is God yeah. and king of everything and he's literally washing dirty feet of, you know, like just, you know, the nobodies, you know. But not only that, one of the guys that he's washing their feet is getting ready to betray him. Yeah. Like literally he's getting ready to snitch on him and turn his back and turn him over to the authorities. And Jesus decides to wash his feet anyway. So it's, it's like this implied thing. He also went on to teach it explicitly, but there's this implied thing that like, man, loving your enemies, mm -hmm. it takes humility, but it's the only way to actually change the world. So yeah. I want you to give some practical advice mm -hmm. to 15 year old Tim. Yeah. Growing up a young black man in Virginia. Yep. How to live a life of humility as a way of being on mission for the gospel. That's great, man. I think of, uh, I think of Luke 10, um, verse 25 through 37. So it's the Good Samaritan. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, um, there's a lawyer comes to Jesus and says, "What must I do to inherit life, eternal life?" Yeah. And Jesus responds. Um, uh, well, what, what do you think? And he says, well, I know I'm supposed to love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength, um, and the love my neighbor as myself. Yeah, right. And then he's like, uh, yep, you got it. Yep. And he's like, okay, but who's my neighbor? Who's my neighbor, yeah. 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 And uh, then he tells the story of the Good Samaritan yep. and talks about how the two religious officials, the Levite and the priest, passed by. Um, well, there's a guy that got robbed right. first, and then um, there's two religious officials that passed by, and literally they passed by and they looked at him, and they said, I'm not dealing with that. I'm gonna keep walking. Right. And um, then a Samaritan man walks along the path yeah. and tends to his needs, cares for him. It says, the Bible literally says, at least the ESV says, he had compassion on him. Yeah. And the significance of that story is that Jews and Samaritans did not get along yeah. at all yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And um, I think it's really interesting how the Lord uses um, Jesus specifically uses uh, this story, these two groups of people, yeah. to talk about compassion. Yeah. And so ultimately, uh, the, the Good Samaritan um, takes care of his wounds and, and takes them to the end and um, tends to his needs. And at the end, uh, he asked, Jesus asked the lawyer, so who do you think had the most, or who, who do you think loved his neighbor the best? And uh, the lawyer responded, the man who had mercy, which was the Good Samaritan. Yeah. And I think, man, like growing up, um, there's just something in my mind that I have. I feel like now Lord has given me um, a unique perspective on. I just want to like reiterate, this is not something that I've like mastered. This is something I'm still learning. Sure. But there's just something so fascinating about loving people and having humility, even in like the midst of someone doing you wrong. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so whether it is something as big as that I've experienced in terms of race, or whether it is um, something as small as uh, someone used something, one of my roommates used something in my house without right. asking. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's humility that we must walk out. And I think, man, like, that is what's attractive, especially right now, like that is what is attractive to the world, yep. is people who are humble, yep. people who um, are visibly showing love to others that especially that don't look like them. Sure. And so I think um, that's just the main thing that like I try to do and just literally I try like every day to say, oh, Lord, let me just love you and love people well. And if I can do those two things, I think like that'll put me in a good spot. Make a huge difference. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. Thanks for, thanks for sharing your story and thanks for being uh, a great example for a lot of us to follow. So I'm gonna pray for us yeah. and then uh, thanks, man. For yeah, thank you. Let's, let's pray. It. God, thank you. Uh, thank you for Tim, thank you for his story. Thank you, God, for how he is such a great example of how to be humble, how to walk out uh, humility, and, and how to live life on purpose and on mission. And so, God, I just pray for everybody watching this that we would all feel um, both the challenge from Jesus to pursue humility, but also to feel the um, encouragement from Jesus that we can actually just pursue humility and that will make a difference. And so God, I just pray, would you, would you pour your spirit out on us and make us just way more humble than we are now and to be able to live on mission pursuing humility in Jesus' name, amen.